It's called the PAUSE study, which is uh, an acronym for perioperative anticoagulation and surgery evaluation. And it deals with patients who are taking an anticoagulant, uh, but one of the newer ones, the so-called direct oral anticoagulants, or DOACs, and dealing with how to manage these patients when they require uh, the interruption of their anticoagulant for a surgery or an, an, an invasive procedure. Well, first of all, it's a very common clinical problem. We estimate that there are probably between five and seven million people worldwide who are have to deal with this issue. And the trial itself uh, looked at patients who were receiving one of the three DOACs, Apixaban, Rivaroxaban, or Dabigatran, and in total there were 3,007 patients recruited, about 1,200 in the Apixaban cohort, 700 in the Dabigatran cohort, and 1,100 in the um, Rivaroxaban cohort. So this was a, a standardized uh, perioperative management approach that we used and it was the first of its kind actually and the uh, the premise was that we wanted we hypothesized that if we looked at uh, DOAC specific interruption and resumption protocols without any heparin bridging and without any preoperative coagulation testing we felt that this protocol would be safe for patient care how did we define safety well we estimated that rates of major bleeding which are quite serious would be around one percent and rates of arterial thromboembolism stroke TIA would be around 0.5 percent and actually the results of our study bore out what we had hypothesized in that rates of major bleeding were between 0.9 and 1.8 in the three different cohorts and rates of arterial thromboembolism were between 0.2 and 0.6 and we had adequate power to exclude a rate of arterial thromboembolism in each of those cohorts uh, of less than 1.5 percent and also adequate power uh, in uh, to exclude uh, a rate of major bleeding of 2 percent in the dabigatran cohort just slightly in the apixaban cohort but not quite in the rivaroxaban cohort because there the the rate of bleeding was a little bit higher at 1.8 percent but overall a study found that with this protocol that we felt was standardized but very importantly easy to use the uh, rates of serious adverse events in this case uh, major bleeding were less than two percent uh, arterial thromboembolism were less than one percent anybody who's dealing with a patient who's taking one of these anticoagulants and there are more and more of them in the coming years and whether that person is a surgeon an anesthesiologist or a family physician dealing with a patient having a procedure it provides them a, a very precise but at the same time very simple uh, guidance on how to manage that patient when to interrupt when it's safe to interrupt when it's safe to resume after the surgery or procedure so the overall intent is to minimize the risk for stroke and thromboembolism and at the same time minimize the risk for serious bleeding I think that this is an area uh, that has been a great uncertainty to clinicians the DOACs have been around for almost a decade but one of the major unanswered questions has been how to deal with people who require such a surgery or procedure. We think that this study will inform uh, that issue that, which is very common. Uh, it will help clinicians manage their patients and it will provide the evidence base for uh, practice guidelines. So we hope that it will have a com considerable impact uh, on patient management, optimizing, uh, reducing, minimizing the risk for adverse events, but also allowing that, peer that care to be streamlined so you don't you know need to cancel procedures and surgeries and uh, you know put risk patients at inconvenience from that standpoint also in addition to the mitigation of risk standpoint